What's up, y'all? Got a banger from Horizon. Let's get straight into it. This is Kevin De Bruyne's ex-wife. She looks like if Lord Farquaad had a daughter. Shots fired! Shots fired! He got millions and millions of dollars and went after that. <laughs> Come on, bro. Cheated on him with Courtois, who was Shocker. his own teammate at the time. Heartbroken mm. KDB wanted his revenge, but luck was not on his side. Years later, he finally got his opportunity. While his ex-wife was present at the stadium, he got a penalty against the guy who stole his wife. It was him versus Courtois, and this is how he got his revenge. Bro, this is why you can never date a chick that is monkey branching over to you, bro. If she has cheated on her man to get with you, buddy boy, you're next. Stupid. You are next. You never date a chick that's cheating on her man to get with you because you're next on the chopping block, buddy. There was a girl in college dating for a little bit. I guess dating, whatever. She was cheating on her man to get with me, and she was like, I want to take things serious. I really like you. I want to be in a relationship. And I was like, uh, absolutely not. Because you cheated on your man to get with me. Baby girl, I know I'm next. Thanks. Thank you, next, as Ariana Grande would say. <laughs> Thank you, next. Shout out to KDB on that. Making her watch that. I actually have found that I think men are more likely to have bizarrely unrealistic expectations. I have so many girlfriends who are highly accomplished, highly educated, great people, and just Stupid. wonderful women. And Stupid. the dating pool is absolutely brutal what for that. What are these men looking for? I, it, it is entirely unclear to me. We're looking that for fit, feminine, friendly, cooperative, submissive women who are quaint, uplifting, elegant, empathetic, and natural and nurturing. That's what we're looking for. We don't give a damn about your career. We don't care about your job. We don't care about anything that you do professionally. We care about your cap uh, capabilities and your capacity to be a mother and a wife. That's what we care about. Your youth, your fertility, things like that. That it's like, why are there men not jumping to want to date them? So, if <laughs> Well, Alicia, those are not bizarre and unrealistic expectations because reality is that ultimately men want to build a family, okay? And most men don't want to be with an accomplished and educated woman because those women are entitled, Thanks. demanding, and a pain to deal with. Even different studies will tell you that that's the case. So most of your accomplished and educated friends are very likely to end up with a cat instead <laughs> of a family, just like Whoopi. Just like Whoopi. <laughs> Let's get the likes up, gents. Get the likes up. Hit that thumbs up for your boy. Hit that thumbs up. Oh my Great lord. Great coach was going through a divorce. Women being these divorces. You gotta get my bag and run. Wait, uh, Eric Spolstra kept 120 million for Miami Heat contract out of his ex-wife's clutches and his divorce. Smart man. They're trying to rob you for the most part. Like, oh, I'm I'm trying to rob you. I'm trying to get as much much money as I can because I'll never be in this lifestyle again, and I have zero ambition to earn it on my own. So I am going to try to rob my husband. That's that's the typical mindset. But Miami Heat looked out. They looked out for Spolstra, right? And look, 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 we know you're going through a divorce. We know your ex-wife is going for everything but the kitchen sink. We know she's... Can't you get it through your we know this. that I'm broke? We know it. We know it. We know she was a cheerleader. You married her. You elevated her life. Oh, no, dude. You never marry a cheerleader. Oh, that's so stupid. She hits you with the... I'm not happy. And she's a runner, she's a track star. We know you got three kids and she, you know, she made sure to put your ass on child mm. support expeditiously. So we gonna wait till all that shit settled and then you gonna get your 120 million dollar. Yeah. Shout out to okay. them, bro. Maybe, maybe. This better be a ticket to Dubai for two weeks straight mm -hmm. round trip. Cause you know I've been wanting to go to Dubai. A two-week trip to Dubai, all-inclusive. What? Oh! <laughs> I can just tell by your kitchen you ain't got the Dubai money. <laughs> what are you talking about? Two weeks in Dubai? Open it up. Uh -oh. You know what it is? <laughs> I just want you to know that I know. Nevada is not mine. Ooh. She's not my daughter. Why did you do this tonight out of all nights? Why? Because I wanted you to know that I know Nevaeh is not mine. I've had uh, doubts. That's she wild. She's got a DNA test. Nevaeh is not mine. She's not my daughter. She's a runner. She's a Why track star. The gaslighting. She Why would you do this? Why would you do this to me? What are you talking about? You spread your legs, got your uh, uh, spine realigned, and your back blown out by another guy and had his baby, and you want me to come in and raise it? Shots fired! Shots fired! Do I look 
stupid. To you, stop. Loves you though. Why would you mm. do this? It's the gaslighting. Why would you do this? Why would you cheat? I didn't cheat. Why would you cheat on me? I didn't. That's proof right I there. I didn't cheat, even though it's another man. Sh Come on, bro. DNA test. Nevaeh is not my daughter. But babe, really? Out of all days, you had three years to give this to me. Now you want to give this to me? Uh husband boarded his flight and left rat. without his wife when she insisted on getting Starbucks at the airport after he said they didn't have time. What? In a Reddit post, the man explained the situation, saying that he and his wife were flying to visit his 21-year-old daughter who was away at college. The husband said he's very type A and hates to be late, but his wife, who is his daughter's son... Bro, she looks like if uh, Captain Crunch was her uncle. Shots fired! Shots fired! Like, this outfit combo is wild mother has a very different go with the flow type of attitude the couple managed to make their first flight on this particular journey but the connecting flight was another story they got to their terminal and had about 15 minutes before the next leg of their journey but the wife insisted she wanted coffee and the husband offered to get it from the market right next to their gate she insisted Stupid. however on going to starbucks which was nowhere near their gate he told her they did not have enough time but she went anyway without him as the plane was boarding this husband called his wife four times to ask where she was she finally answered on the fourth call and said that she was on her way back to the terminal and that the line at starbucks was exceptionally long the husband went ahead and boarded the plane after the gate agent said they couldn't hold up the flight he full-on left his wife behind he told her to get a ticket for the next flight and that he'd see her when she arrived when she finally arrived Dang. at her stepdaughter's school this wife had nothing to say to her husband and after a week of the silent treatment she finally told him that he was wrong and shouldn't have boarded the plane without her but ultimately the oh. wife is responsible for her own actions. of course <laughs> it's his fault that he got on his plane in time it's his fault. come on bro that's why i say women grow old they never grow up dude the husband also has a responsibility to be there for his daughter when he says he will be there. The wife was only thinking about herself and made her husband Unreal. decide between her and his child when she decided that the coffee was more important. Having your man book you a trip and then leaving without him and bringing your friends with you Ooh. has got to be one of the most diabolical things I've seen. Ooh, hey, babe, I just booked a beach house to celebrate your birthday. Oh my God, babe, I love you so much. My friends can come, right? Your friends? Your friends. Yes, I'm only bringing Victoria and Blessing. Yeah, I guess. I thought I thought it would just be the two of us, but it's okay. The house can contain six people. All right, baby. Thank you. Hey, babe, I'm packed and ready. Should I come pick you up or we meet at the airport? Oh, but I thought I already told you. Told me what? Oh, my God. This is kind of awkward, babe. Promise you won't get angry. Angry for what? What happened? Just promise me first. Okay, I won't. Fingers crossed. You know I love you. She better than me. You don't tell me some shit like that. I'm already oh, mad. <laughs> shit. Yeah, babe. I love you too. What happened was since the house can have just six people, I already told my friends I'll celebrate it with them and we're six in numbers. I meant to tell you I'm so sorry. So? Five can come along. Don't worry. We left already. Huh? We're already on the airplane to the beach house. I'm so sorry. I forgot to tell you. What are you even saying? On a trip that I fully paid for? I know, babe. I'm so sorry. You promised to forgive me. I organized everything for both of us. Me and you. I paid for everything. I only allowed your friends because it's what you wanted. And now this is what I get? Just please tell me you're joking. Tell me this is a prank. No, it's not, baby. I'm so sorry. Babe, are you there? Babe, <laughs> have fun. <laughs> Thanks, babe. I know you understand. That's why I love you. What this man does next? <laughs> Somebody please give him a medal. Somebody please give this man a reward. He deserves it. Hey, babe, we're at the receptionist. They can't find your name there. What name did you use? Babe, yes. Miss call. <laughs> Why aren't you picking up the phone? <laughs> Where are you? Another Miss call. Babe, please respond. Yes. She's checking the system and she can't find it. Try using your name. Okay. Still nothing. Y'all picking up on what he did? <laughs> she can't find it. Oh, I forgot to tell you. I can't for the <laughs> reservation. <laughs> He forgot to tell her. I love it. What? <laughs> I'm sorry, babe. I hope you understand. Why would you do that? Please don't embarrass me like this. I'm really exhausted. I need to rest, please. You've always said you wanted to make stupid decisions. You can start by sleeping on the floor. I love it. Baby, this is so embarrassing. We're all tired and hungry. That sounds like a personal problem. For real. This nigga said, go hunting. <laughs> <laughs> Go hunting. <laughs> By the way, I also cancel your flight ticket. You can walk your way back to. <laughs> what? I'm sorry, babe. Please, just let me come back home, please, babe, babe. <laughs> All these missed calls. Please pick oh up, y'all. And now I, I ain't gonna lie. If this was out of the country, 
I probably wouldn't have done that. Like, I'm not about to be stranded. Have. Let in me know another. in the comments. Would you have done it if it was out of the country? I 100% would have done it if it was out of the country. The country. Like, that's a little, that's a little fucked up. But if we in fucking Texas and you went to New York or fucking Miami and you pulled this shit. Oh, yeah. Nah. Find your own way back. So I came across this and Bro. I had to bring it to you guys' attention. Soccer player Kaka's ex-wife says she divorced him because he was the perfect husband. Said he never mistreated me. He was always loving and kind. He was a great father, can't make this a stuff great up. provider. He was just too perfect, and I just wasn't happy. <laughs> well, I've done a video on that one. Uh, that one's unreal, bro. Absolutely unreal. But that's what it is, dude. That's what it is these days. Today, that I have nothing to offer a man. Nothing. At least she knows. And I feel like it took number one. It took me uh, 32 years to realize it because I just take out the lip piercings. Take out the nose piercings. Look a little bit more natural, and men will probably approach you, but you look like a freak of nature right now. Found that out today, so I was today years old when I realized it. And then um, it took me a lot of pride swallowing to be able to admit it. A lot um, of what swallowing? <laughs> I'm going to tell you why I feel the way I feel. This is not based off anyone else. This is only based off myself, but I just wanted to share it just in case it may help somebody else. I feel like I don't have anything to offer to a man because a man asked me what I had to offer him. And it was the way he asked that made me realize that I don't. He simply stated, I realize that you're single, but tell me what would I benefit from having you as my woman? Now, outside of the basics, like, oh, I look nice, I can cook, I work, I didn't have nothing else to offer. And the reason I realized that I didn't is because I got to thinking about myself and all I've been doing for oh so many years is just working and taking care of kids. I don't know necessarily what I'm into, so there, there goes hobbies. I'm not necessarily sure my feminine level of energy because majority of my relationships, I wore the pants. So how can you, as a woman offer to be a woman to a man if you've never fully been a woman. Facts. I am a woman because I'm a female, but I'm talking about like actually be a woman, like to a man. I've never experienced that, so I don't know what that feels like. So I can't honestly say that I have anything to offer as far as a woman outside of just being a woman. So that means all I really do have to offer is some pussy because I'm a woman and we have one. That's really not enough. It's not. Well, here's the thing. And she's based for at least admitting that. Here's the thing. Women are raised up being taught what to expect from a man, but they're never taught what men expect from them. I'll say it again for the ones in the back. Women are raised up knowing what to expect from a man, but never learning what a man expects from them. This is why all these women are so entitled. They get into the dating market and they're like, well, he needs to be you know, six foot tall, six pack abs, six figures, blah, blah, blah. He needs a, a laundry list of things that he needs to do. But then you're like, well, what do you do? What do you bring to the table? They're like, well, I'm me. I'm me. Stupid. What do you mean? It's it's me. It's lovely old Petunia. <laughs> What's there not to like? And we're like, yeah, just because your daddy treated you like a princess doesn't mean I'm going to do the same thing. This is why this entitlement gets taught at an early age. Like, and uh, there's a lot of simps out there. The simp epidemic is run, running rampant right now, so it's really bad. But it's it's your job as a guy to always make a woman have to fight for your approval. Don't just give her everything that she wants, because as soon as you do that, she's hypergamous. She's going to be like, well, I've gotten his approval completely. Well, mm, I don't really like him that much. I want I want another one. This is why I always say women that are women that are hard to get are easy to keep. Women that are easy to get are hard to keep. Because if she's easy to get and bring in the door and smush and smash and pass or whatever and, and smash and dash, then more than likely another guy can. Get her attention really really easily but if a girl it takes a little bit to get her attention get her affection then more than likely it's gonna be a little bit easier to keep her um, so I'm planning on doing have you guys seen those balloon pop videos let me know in the chat let me know in the comments have you guys seen those balloon pop videos I'm planning on doing one of those next month so I'm getting everything prepared right now but I just want I, I came across this clip and I wanted to show you guys former balloon show contestant faces up to 16 years in prison for falsely accusing multiple men of sexual assault and extortion um, I popped it because you seem very tired, like an extra in Friday, like like Big Smokey. A woman who accused former Dodger Trevor Bauer of sexual assault has now wow. been indicted. A woman who accused former Dodgers pitcher Trevor Bauer of sexual assault has been charged with fraud in Arizona. 
A grand jury indictment unsealed Monday accuses Darcy Adana Esmonu of fraud and theft by extortion against Bauer and another man. Wow. Esmonu sued Bauer, saying he raped her and got her pregnant in 2020. Bauer says she demanded money to terminate the pregnancy, but later said she had a miscarriage. Bauer posted a five-minute video on YouTube responding to the indictment and addressing allegations at large for the first time in months. Here's the thing, she never had an abortion because she was never even pregnant, and that's corroborated by her own medical records. When I refused to pay her the $3.6 million she was asking for, she made up a bogus sexual assault claim and filed a civil suit against me. In the countersuit, Bauer's lawyers claim she took the money for the abortion and went to Philadelphia to get LASIK eye surgery. Wow. There are women that will try and ensnare you and extort you for money. And if they uh, come out with these claims and they smear your reputation, they can destroy your career. We tried reaching out to Asmonu and her legal team, but were unsuccessful. Shocker. Her next court date is next week, and she could face more than 16 years if convicted on both charges. Good. Darcy Adana Asmonu has been criminally indicted for committing felony fraud against me and another man. So now she's facing up to 16 years in prison. We had one plain sexual encounter in December of 2020. Nothing that could be considered remotely rough. Uh, she initiated it, but don't take my word for it. Take hers. This is a picture and text message she sent me the next morning explaining why she came on to me. And for months afterward, she repeatedly requested to sleep with me again. Uh, for example, this text from January 7th, 2021. At one point, she even requested a sample of my sperm so she could have my child whenever she wanted to in the future. Now, it's hard to keep track, but she's made at least four seven-figure demands over the last few years. Uh, more than a year after the one time we slept together, Adana retained a lawyer. Wow, bro, this is absolutely wild to me. <laughs> this is wild. This is why, man, a lot of you guys have been bamboozled by these women. It's truly sad. It really, truly is. And I feel bad for the guys that have because it's really hard to tell a woman's true intentions. This is why I say, depending on your age, you really need to date these women for multiple years, bro. You need like three to five years to be able to, to, to see really what's going on with her. You know what I mean? Because if she's not willing to be with you, at least for that long, just dating, more than likely she's gonna get bored with marriage. A girl that rushes marriage is also looking for a divorce. I'll say it again for the ones in the back. A girl that's rushing marriage is is looking for a divorce. Because here, here's the thing, there's a big difference between a, being a wife and being um, a mother. And there's a big difference between being a wife and also being married. A lot of women just wanna be married. Right, they just wanna have the title of being married, I've got the ring on my finger, I've got the house, I've got the white picket fence, I got all this, but they're not actually a wife. A wife is someone who empowers their husband, who is a helpmate to their husband, who is submissive to their husband, right? And a wife can do that without kids, but then the next level, the superior level of all that is being a mother, right? A mother is gonna look out for the well-being of the family, be the mediator of conflict things like that. A lot of women aren't even taught that. A lot of women are, think, are taught to be so narcissistic, egocentric in nature that they're like, oh, it's all about me. As long as I'm happy, happy wife, happy life. No, happy spouse, happy house. You should look to make each other happy. But also, you have to allow women to thrive in their feminine. And as men, I think we need to thrive in our masculine. I do think men should go out there and provide and protect. I think women should take care of the home and cook and clean and do all that. I think in those extremes, we are the most successful. Men thrive in their most masculine, women thrive in their most feminine. I just think that's how it is. That's what I believe. I've seen the most success from those relationships, those types of relationships, since my grandparents, right? Think about, think about when your grandparents were together. I don't know if your grandma worked. Mine did, she was a nurse until she was about 50, I think, and then she stopped working. But my grandfather worked all the way up until he died, you know, until he had his you know, quadruple bypass and he was in bed all the time. And then he, you know, eventually rest in peace, um, you know, went up, went up to the clouds to meet Jesus. But he worked his butt off his entire life to, to provide a good life for my grandma. And then they had four kids. But back in the day, you could have four kids. On, he was a milkman on a milkman's salary. Bro, do you think there's guys out there that can deliver for de deliver chips for Frito-Lay and have a family of four in a nice house? Bro, no, it doesn't happen. You almost have to work. To live comfortably in this country, you have to make like $200,000 a year. You know how hard it is to make $200,000? That's a lot of money, dude. That's a lot. Even 10 grand a month is hard to make. That's a lot of money. And a lot of people don't even get those chances, especially if you live in rural areas or smaller, smaller areas or states that it's really cheap. Like if you live in Alabama, it's really hard to make $200,000 a year or Georgia, even in parts of Texas, it's really difficult. That's why I, that's why I say go out there and learn a high income skill. 
go learn a skill that's going to pay you directly proportionate to what value of, of kind of life you want to live. You want to live a, an extravagant life. You probably need to be a lawyer, a doctor, or an influencer or something like that. You need to go make a lot of money. But a lot of people, they get out of college and they think, oh, I have a degree. I can just get paid a lot of money. No, that's not how it works. You're just in a lot of debt. Stupid. This is why, like, if I, if, if, if me and Cass have kids, I'm going to tell my kid, like, you can go to college, but you really only need to go to college for a couple of things, like anything medically related, or if you want to be like a physician or something like that, cool, go to college for that. But you don't really need to go to college to be a lawyer. You can just study and then go take the bar. You want to be a welder? You can just take classes. And now, if you want to be a teacher, you can go get a teacher certificate, but I hope my kid wants to do something a little bit more than being a teacher. Shout out to the teachers out there, but you guys just don't get paid enough. You know how stressful it is to be a teacher. I used to be one. I can make now in three months what I used to make in an entire year. It's absolutely insane, you know, the difference when you switch careers, and I went into sales as opposed to being a teacher. But that's enough of my rant. I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Go cop the ebook, The Four Pillars of Personality. It makes you irresistible to women and respected by men. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. I'll see you guys tomorrow, man. Peace.